introduction to our guests that are here tonight. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot of people missing. It's Palm Beach County Days in, in Tallahassee. Um, and I hear they're having some really bad weather. I'm glad that we're not up there and we're down here. Amen. Um, tonight, Matthew McWalters from Karen Brill's um, County Commission campaign is here. Welcome. I know Karen's in Tallahassee. Um, Chris Nordstrom, District A to Senator Rader. Chris? Captain Moss. Lieutenant Joseph. Terry Mitz from Tina Polsky's office. Tracy Adams, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Did I miss anybody? Mike Pratt, Mike, you didn't sign in. Um, Palm Beach County Tax, no, Property Appraiser's office. He's at the top of the list, room. He's the first he is? Oh. <laughs> I can't see. Um, my bad. Um, before we get started, just a quick update what, what's been, that I know that's going on, which it's really been kind of quiet for the uh, past month because of the holidays. Uh, Tina Polsky's office had the meeting with um, FDOT regarding the sound barrier walls on the turnpike and they are going to get back to the impacted communities. It was very well attended. Um, it was an informative meeting, so that was good. And um, I really, not, not much else has gone on. Captain House, do you want to give an update what's going on? I think it's been quiet. Sure. Well, it hasn't it's been, been quiet. One big thing <laughs> One big So if, good evening, if you don't know me, uh, my name is David Moss, I'm the captain and commander for District 7 West Boca Raton. Uh, quick update of some of the year-end statistics for 2019. Uh, if you want to compare them to 2018, just an outlook on crime for the West Boca area. Uh, real quick, robberies uh, in 2018 uh, totaled 40 for 2019. Last year, they totaled 22, so that's a good thing. Um, down was 50%. Uh, residential burglaries and vehicle burglaries also declined about 17%. Um, and so that's the year-end numbers. Uh, over the holidays, we really didn't have any significant incidents uh, at some of the shopping plazas. We put a lot of extra patrol out there and things like that. Uh, for 2020, we've started out with uh, uh, one or two uh, issues that you might have seen on the news uh, in terms of uh, we did have a bank robbery which isn't unusual we had one in Sandalfoot about eight, eight weeks ago uh, we just had one at Glazen 441 uh, over at the Chase uh, we put out a flyer on that with a full view photo of the individual usually the bank robbers are not that smart when this happens uh, so please if you have any information on that or the other robberies further out west that we've also put out photos on. Uh, you can call Crime Stoppers anonymously um, and actually collect a reward. I'm very confident that that will come to a successful uh, conclusion on uh, on those issues. Um, and that one's at, at the Publix? Yeah, yeah, there's... And there's a picture of that person? Uh, yep, yeah, there was one at the Publix, the Loggers Run area, because there was one uh, also a few days before that, and there are both pictures out on both of those, um, and they're pretty clear. Uh, they're good photos, and uh, I just spoke to some of the detectives before I came over here. Uh, the one individual uh, detective, she's working, uh, the Publix one, um, and she's been working it around the clock pretty much since it happened. In fact, when we last spoke to her, she's just going to bed for the first time this morning, and, uh, and you know, I can't really release any details, but stay tuned. Okay. Um, so, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I um, flew the woods on Sunday morning. Uh -huh. had six individuals dressed in black in our community. Uh -huh. Everybody who had open car doors uh -huh. had their cars ransacked. One was stolen, <clears throat> but before PBSO actually left the person's house, they had already recovered the car, so kudos to you guys. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, Fred. Now that we're past the holiday season, yes. can you uh, tell uh, us how prevalent porch piracy has been in your district and uh, how 
vital has the, these ring doorbell things been in helping you solve these okay, crimes? So, so two part question really quick, uh, knock on wood, fortunately, I cannot recall in West Boca, uh, and I'm not saying this is an accurate fact, but uh, a porch pirate incident um, that we've had to recently investigate. Can you? We, we meet every week on all the crimes that happen. Uh, on the flip side of that, ring or the equivalent of, because that's a specific brand, doorbell, uh, we do a whole presentation, our detective sergeant comes out and explains how to log into the app that's available to anyone one of these doorbell cameras and when they do because you see them on the news I mean people love it because they can put it on TV right and people can watch it happen and hey I know that guy or that person or whatever uh, it's all over YouTube with people making up packages with uh, you know different things in there that aren't so pleasant anyway uh, so the two part is I think a lot of the video cameras and doorbells and everything else that if you have one or, or you're thinking about getting it, uh, it really does help. Um, not only catch the person, but deter the people. And they help in other crimes too. Um, you know, we've had shootings, uh, more serious crimes throughout the county where the neighbor's ring camera, whatever it is, uh, captures the, the incident or the suspect coming or going, and it helps us uh, solve those cases. So those are your answers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Captain Thank you. Thomas. Mike. No, no. <coughs> okay, well, good evening, everybody. It's great to be here again this month, and I just wanted to say to everybody that, uh, uh, that uh, we're working really hard at the property appraisal's office. One of the things that you may know or not know, and that is that homestead exemption, um, which is the largest exemption that you can, you can get, um, the filing period is still open until March the 1st. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize uh, how, how large Palm Beach County is. Just to give you a, a bit of an idea, uh, it is 2,200 square miles in size. It is actually the largest county and area uh, in the state of Florida of all 67 counties, as well uh, as the third largest in the tax roll value. A couple of, uh, in the back of the room uh, on the table, we have a brochure that we uh, let everybody have. It looks like this right here. And this is our property appraiser. I think she's gonna be here next month if you're, uh, if you're interested. But just to hit a couple of uh, interesting facts. One, um, we have 1.4 million residents 8,000 parcels of parkland. Uh, Palm Beach County, uh, county's portion is 246 square miles. And one of the things people don't realize because, you know, they think you know, the, east side of uh, the east side of Palm Beach County is, you know, full of uh, condominiums and uh, big houses, but Palm Beach County is the leader in agricultural uh, production in the entire state of Florida. And that includes not just sugar cane, but fresh sweet corn and sweet bell peppers as well. Uh, just to wrap up, um, we have residential parcels, 404,000 condominium units, 187,000 condominium units, 21,000 commercial uh, parcels, 5,200 agricultural uh, classified parcels, and uh, 339,000 homestead exempted properties in Palm Beach County of 650,000 total parcels. So we're big, and uh, if you want to learn more about how to file for homestead exemption, how we appraise your property, how we value it, it's based on the first day of the year is our assessment date using the previous year's uh, sales to guide us in valuation of your, of your property. And you will see a notice from us once a year in August the trim notice, truth and millage is what it stands for. Uh, but once a year we send in a notice and it gives you an opportunity to want to look at your value, uh, what we, we say it is. And if you're unhappy with the valuation of the property, you think it's too high, um, then you can file uh, a petition with the Value Adjustment Board for $15 and get an opportunity to stand and sit before the uh, property appraiser's office uh, in a quasi-judicial uh, setting 
with a, an appraiser yourself and make your case. So, I mean, we're not always right. We have absolutely not. And the period of time from the time you get the trim notice until the time that the filing period for a value adjustment board is up is 25 days. So when you get that notice, that's the time to contact us because we're able to uh, make changes, correct errors without going through a, a large and cumbersome uh, process with the value adjustment board. Um, so with that, uh, thanks once again, Sherry. Thank you. If you have Thank any you. questions, I'll be here after, after the meeting. Thank you. Tracy, you wanna give us a, an update before you leave us? Hi, good evening. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tracy Adams. I'm the district chief down here in the West Boca area. Um, Palm Beach County is pretty large. We have eight different district chiefs. So we have everywhere from Jupiter to the East Coast into Lake Worth, out to the Glades area, and then is um, south to the county line. This is my, my particular area. I will be leaving you though, I'm so sorry. Um, I just accepted a recent, a recent promotion to the district, uh, pardon me, Division Chief of Emergency Operations Management. So I will be transitioning, but I do assure you and I promise you that whoever is going to be promoted in my place, that I will help make their transition very smooth and turn over this big moving ship to them. So at any rate, a few things I just wanted to, to bring to your attention is, first of all, is the LPGA. If anybody's a golfer, you'll know what that means. I wasn't, I'm not necessarily a golfer, but it is the Ladies Professional Golf Association, and they are hosting a huge tour here next week. So they will be in town. They have over 140 pros and 200 participants, and they're expecting over 30,000 people over the course of next week, right here at Boca Rio Golf Club. So I want you to know that we are aware of this. We are prepared for this. I've been working with the, um, the company Octagon, that is the special event company for this. I've written um, an instant action plan for this. I am very aware of what's going on and we can talk again as well. Um, as far as they're gonna be shuttling buses in, people aren't gonna be parking all over here. They're gonna be parking at the West, at the Boca Mall, the Town Center Mall oh, wow. and being shuttled in. So um, there's a few other places there will, it is going to be um, staffed with PBSO um, there at all the days. A few of the days aren't so busy, public, the public is not going to be there on um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, but actually, don't quote me, Wednesday possibly, but definitely Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we are prepared though, and it, and it seems like it's going to be a peaceful, uneventful event, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention, so if you see a lot going on, You'll know what's going on. It's that event, and it is. It is a. Um, it's nationally recognized, so it will be on national TV as well. So, um, wow! I went over and toured the golf course. There it is. It is a beautiful place. So that starts on Monday. Monday the big day is January twentieth. That's going to be the first day, and it's going to go um, for six days. But Mon Monday is some golfing day or some tie day they or some I forget the name of the Monday that they may have on the 27th oh, the, the tiebreaker. yes the tiebreaker, tiebreaker. Day. so it might might be over as of Sunday anyway but we're preparing for that and um, we have we're hiring other special event people for fire rescue so hope we won't be drawing necessarily on mm -hmm. um, what you have here in place for your mm -hmm. fire rescue service. So it starts Monday on Martin Luther King Day? Yes, January 20th mm -hmm. is the first day the players will be playing and warming up, and then um, Tuesday's another day of play, Wednesday is a day, a charity play, and then they start, I guess, their tournament. So, so, but we, we, we've got it covered, so if you have any other questions, you can call Sherry and I'll, and I'll talk with her. We have, um, we're pushing through a lot of new recruits at Fire Rescue, which is, which is wonderful. They've just released a recruit class. We did receive recruits from them, and we have another starting on Monday. So that's, that's good news. We're pushing through a lot of new recruits and building our Fire Rescue force. Um, new promotions. This is really exciting stuff. You have a new fire chief. Chief um, Durham is new. He comes um, with an incredible talent and expertise from other fire departments as well. And Sherry's gonna meet with him the first week in February. And I think she will really enjoy meeting him. He's very easy to talk to, very well experienced. So we, I think we're moving moving in the, in the right direction as far as that goes. We have another, um, those of you that know uh, Pat Kennedy, 
Pat Kennedy was promoted to the assistant chief right underneath him, which is, uh, we're very happy for Pat Kennedy. He's he lives in West Boca. Pardon me? He lives in West Boca. Yes, he's a West Boca resident. So th that's some really good stuff going on. So you do have a new fire marshal as well, Chief Dave Dorita. He comes from Palm Beach Gardens, excellent employee, very knowledgeable. I think you're gonna be very pleased. We'll try to get him to one of the meetings to come up so you can meet him as well. This battalion is currently involved in um, a standpipe operations training right now. What is that, right? I said, I told him, put them in lay terms, please. What it is, is one of our firefighters built this amazing prop to teach other firefighters how to deal with situations, the standpipes in multi-story buildings, hotels, multi anything multi-stories. And actually he just patented it because a couple of other organiz fire risk organizations are like, wow, how do I, how do I build that? Where do I get that? Because the training is very, very technical training that's going to benefit us to, to help to protect you guys in the event of where we have any kind of fire in a multi-story building. So that's really good stuff. I'm going to send Sherry the picture of the prop that was built because it's pretty impressive. If I had a scream, I'd, I'd put it up, but it's a pretty impressive pop, prop. So she'll send that out to you guys as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So I just went on a Santa tour. We delivered our fire department, our people collected um, toys in front of Walmart for several days. <coughs> many, many, many toys. I mean, I don't even know the number, but there were so many. And we loaded up several engines and we had a caravan and we caravaned around Sandalfoot and, and uh, other Boca Woods and a couple of the other areas as well. A two hour ca uh, caravan where they tossed out um, candy and toys and, and I literally had tears in my eyes to see how excited the residents were and the children were to get the toys and the candy and to see our people doing it and a lot of our people came in on their day off to do it as well not only were they the, some of the paid people but a lot of our volunteer people as well so that was we had a good holiday so I'm very thankful for that um, thank, thank you for being supportive of fire rescue I appreciate it and that's all I've got for today I'm from New York, where the fire department does the kidding? fires and the, uh, the, the emergency medical services do the other thing. Here, we have a combined agency. Can you tell us what percentage of the truck runs are fire-related versus... Um, just generally speaking, uh, close to 90% of calls are, are medical calls. But we're fortunate that we have a combined effort. We really are, because we are prepared for either or, all of our people are dual trained, fire rescue and EMT, EMT or paramedic as well. So even when you see an ambulance, which we call a fire rescue truck, that fire rescue, um, that fire rescue, what you would like to call ambulance, which we call, we call a rescue truck, is fully equipped for those firefighters to partake in a fire. And a lot of times that's what they are. The, the first in engine is gonna be fire attack, pulling the hose, maybe hooking up to a hydrant, Second and rescue is going to come in, don their equipment, their SCBA, which is their breathing apparatus and their tools, prepare to force a door open and go and bam for a primary search right away. Then they can pull out and take care of that, that the person or you know whoever needs to be treated right away. They have the background to do it. So the combined effort, the dual certification is very good. One other question. I've been noticing in the shopping centers a large R with a fire shield around it on the front doors. What, what, what does that mean? That's the, 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 the roof rating. And and I can, what does I can, that mean? I can send you some more information at that, on, on that as well. Thank you. True. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you have a good evening and a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you from West Boca, not just the, the ones where the firefighters collected the toys for many of the communities, um, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue uh, made arrangements with those communities, the communities supplied the, the candy or whatever, um, and they did a parade, and yes, a lot of them were doing it on their time off, and that's very much appreciated. It's, it gives you a real good sense of community, so thank you. Oh, I have one more other thing to say. No, your time's up. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going first. Um, we just recently campaigned for the United Way through our internal organization to raise funds for United Way because the United Way is really just a large organization that helps to um, raise and generate funds for a lot of smaller organizations in Palm Beach County, over 100 partner agencies that help everywhere from, from homeless to um, 
the Hunger Coalition to Elderly Support Services, and we our, our fire rescue campaign went so strong this year. I'm so proud to say that not only do we give from our heart and go out and risk our lives for the public, but we also gave financially, and we gave $330,000 this year. So we, we our goal, thank you, our goal was to reach um, 200, and we reached 330, which was huge. Last year we, we reached 221, which our goal was 165. So it's growing and growing and growing. So I'm super proud of that. I'm, um, I was the campaign chair for it, and I'm super proud of the generosity that we were able, and that all that the money stays in Palm Beach County, which is huge to help all those partner organizations. So when somebody has an issue and the Red Cross is called out, or you know, a home that's on fire, then we we just recently had a home, a home in Boca Woods that was on fire, and I believe Red Cross was called out as well. We by by us being able to participate and and give generously to those organizations really benefit. So I'm really proud to say that we, we really were strong this year and we're gonna to continue to, because I gave Chief Durham my, my commitment to help to make sure that campaign continues to run, run strong because it benefits us here in Palm Beach County. That's great, thank you. Terry Mitsu, you wanna give an update? I'll just stand here and I don't have much of an update because the session started today. Oh, you are, okay. I hate oh, the camera. I'm sorry. The I'm right. camera shy. The camera loves you. <laughs> I'm camera shy. So uh, from, I'm an aide to Representative Tina Polsky and session started today so there's not a lot to report but I will go back to what uh, Sherry mentioned. With, with the turnpike meeting, we had 130 people in the room. That was my last count and we were turning people away because we couldn't fit any more in the room. Uh, what it, the result of that meeting is it was the first meeting of many. So we'll keep an open discussion going with FDOT as we get closer to the Turnpike uh, expansion project to talk about everything, the noise, just everything about it. So if you have questions that, are, uh, that you need answered, please give me a call. And if I can't answer them from what I learned at the meeting, I can refer you to the folks who did the presentation. And the other thing that we did at this, uh, two days later after that presentation, we, along with Senator Rader's office, did a farm share event at, in uh, Boca, what was, what's the, Boca Glades Community Church. Church. And more than 300 families came. And when I got there at 5.30 in the morning, people were in line to get food. We have a lot of we have a lot of people in our community. We think of Boca as being such a wealthy community, but we also have a lot of people who need help, and I was grateful that we could be part of that farm share event, and I hope to do one once or twice in the coming year, in the 2020, and hopefully we'll work more closely with the council, so thank you all. Thank you. Chris Nordstrom, you want to give an update on uh Kevin, uh, oh, there you are. I knew you were here. Couldn't have said it. Uh, couldn't have just said anything uh, better than Terry just said. Um, but glad to be here uh, as always. Um, and if you're interested in our newsletter, I've got uh, plenty in the back table over there. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go on to what everybody came to on us to find out what's going on with the new shopping center we called Farmer John's Uptown, and um, Alex Rosemary will give us an update. And before he does, I want to tell you that for years prior to them even going to zoning or to the county, they met with us, um, with our board, asking, if, with people in the community, asking what it was that, that we were looking for um, out here in West Boca. And I'm happy to say that they worked with us the whole time, and I think that they're bringing to us an excellent product. And with that, I'd like to introduce Alex Rosemary. So, um, I want to also introduce my, my partners, Rick Giles and Brian Schmier. Um So, it's the three of us that are working on this project collectively. Um, Sherry's right, we've been on this project since uh, it's been four years now. Um, and uh, just to kind of a little history of who we are, and I'll let these guys come up and talk about themselves and the specifics about each, each part of the project. Let's go over some high-level stuff. 
is um, <clears throat> I'm a resident of Boca Raton. I've lived here all my life. Um, so um, my father, my parents came here in the early 1970s. We've been developing real estate in Boca Raton since the early, since the um, mid 80s and uh, mostly in East Boca Raton. We developed the FAU Research Park. Rick and I did uh, um, the uh, first purpose-built student housing deal in Boca Raton, which is University Park. Um, and a number of projects, self-storage and you know some other smaller ones around Boca Raton. So very familiar with the community. That was a key part of the deal for us is understanding what the community wanted. And as Sherry uh, mentioned, we uh, the first thing we did was we met with all of you, you know, and, and understood what you wanted and what West Boca needed. Now, West Boca was, you know, in this development cycle, West Boca hadn't gotten its due as far as new development. Um, the shopping centers were a little bit outdated, the multifamily, there hadn't been new apartments built in West Boca for 20 something years. So we knew that there was, you know, the need for a project of this size and scale and this quality. Um, we have put a tremendous amount of time as a team in this deal over the past four years. We have lost sleep at night. We have, um, you know, it has been, uh, it's been a full commitment on our, not only our side, but also our team. We have a phenomenal team out here. Yes. You want me to do what you allowed? Hard of hearing. You're hard of hearing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have a phenomenal team. Um, in December alone, we had 32 trucks a day pouring concrete for 20 days. That's pretty amazing for uh, December. Um, you can see there's been a lot of activity out there and a lot of movement in the past few weeks. Um, you'll start to see it's coming alive now. The last, this is the fun part of a project where all the details and the decisions we have pined over for years start to come to fruition. So we're really excited about it. It is, for our standpoint, we think we um, really spent a lot of time we believe we developed a deal from a mixed-use perspective that truly works, that is functional, that is timeless, that um, will allow the retailers to thrive and allow the multifamily to be a great lifestyle component for the project. So we're very excited about that piece. Um, that's from that perspective. It's it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, we expect to start opening the uh, uh, retailers in the midsummer, and Brian can go into more specifics about who those are and uh, the multifamily about the same time. So without further ado, I'll let Rick come up here and talk a little bit about the multifamily. One quick question. Sure. You, you said those are rental apartments? Or that those are all rental apartments, and Rick can come up and talk okay. more about that. Good evening, I'm Rick Giles, and uh, Brian and Alex and I have been working on this project for quite a long time, and we're very proud of the fact that we're gonna be opening very soon. My specialty is uh, multifamily business. I'm a 20-year uh, plus resident of Western Palm Beach County. I live in Wellington, and I've been involved with the development of about 4,000 apartment units in the state of Florida. And um, we are building 456 um, luxury apartments, one, two, three, and four bedroom, with uh, a parking garage and uh, world-class amenities, fitness center, pool, uh, dog spa, you name it, Uber waiting lounge. So we are building a state-of-the-art amenity package for these apartments. So the starting rents for the apartments, the one bedrooms will start at around $1,800 a month. So, and if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to uh, Talk about the dog spa. Oh. Tell me about that. So, so as you guys probably all know, people love their pets. And we have decided we are very pet friendly and for a lot of people, their dogs are like part of the family, like their children. So one of the amenities that we build when we develop apartments is uh, a dog spa. And it's a place, dog wash, dog treats, everything. And we also have a dog park where you can walk your dog and things like that. So very pet friendly developer. So we're excited. You said it starts at 1800, what is it gonna go up to? Well, four bedroom units will, we haven't finalized pricing on everything yet. But the, the top prices will be um, in the a little over three thousand dollars a unit. How many square feet? Uh, square footages will range from about eight hundred to about fourteen hundred square feet. When is the completion date? We will open the first building in July, early July. Is that and the big one? Yes, yes it is. And then we will complete all seven buildings. Will be complete. It'll take about a year to build the entire project. Is it gated? Yes. yes. What we've done is we've really gone out of our way to incorporate it into the retail component of the project. You know, what we didn't want to do is build a really nice apartment complex just staring at the back end of a retail center. So what we've done is we've integrated the two so it's sort of a workshop live environment. So, 
And with that, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. The movie theater, can you supply any details? Is it one screen? Is it a multiplex? Is it an IMAX? Do you know anything so about that? I'm getting ready to introduce Brian Schmier, who's the movie theater expert. And, uh, and Brian is uh, is handling all the retail. So with that, Brian. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. One question: When um, will it be available for us to, you know, fill out applications? It'll it'll be. We're, we're going to start pre-leasing around April 1st. Um, and typically, what happens in apartments is you begin taking applications and talking to people a few months before the building is actually delivered. So we will around April 1st. Uh, have um, a leasing trailer on the property and so that people can come by and get floor plans and talk to our leasing folks. Hi, how many entrances and exits will they, there be to this complex? So off of 95th there's a resident only ingress and egress point so there will be a resident only entrance that will be gated coming in from 95th and then the main entry will be coming in from Glade so there's two. Okay. Yes? <coughs> There are workforce housing units in there. As part of our approvals, uh, Palm Beach County, uh, we work very closely with Palm Beach County, and there are 25% of the apartments are workforce housing. So it's gonna be great in that respect uh, because it'll be a, a great alternative for folks that are firefighters and teachers and police officers. It's gonna be a great place for them to move to. How much is that as They average about five to $600 less than the regular market rate. Yeah. Two questions. Did you say golf? Golf? Yeah. No golf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Rick Giles. Have you started leasing? Are people committed? No. Yet? Well, we've been getting a lot of phone calls. There's a ton of interest. You know, as you guys probably know, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I just read an article in the Wall Street Journal last week, and this article said that because of the tax law changes, people are flooding from Connecticut and New York into Florida. So a year ago, if you look at one year ago today, there are about 600,000 more people that are claiming Florida as their primary address. So it's, uh, there, there's a, a great demand for apartments. Go ahead. Yes. Who's the owner of the whole property? Who's what? Who's the owner of the whole property? You're looking at them, Brian, Alex, and Rick. Do you have a corporation name or what? Um, no, we do not have a corporation name. It's, it's, it's three different companies as a it's three different companies as a partnership, and there's a fourth company as a as a partner as well. Do you consider density when you developed it? We did. We went through a very exhaustive process with the county to to figure out what the best use, uh, highest and best use for the site is. Yes. Yeah. Will we have a homeowners? I haven't had a homeowners, but I could. Association that will there will not be an association, no. Oh, like <clears throat> yes. Will there be a physical division between the commercial and the residential so that shoppers don't have access to yes. the... Yes. How will that work? It's There are entry gates that you'll have to be invited in in order to gain access. So there's an entry gate off of 95th and there's... But a resident gate. will be able to pass directly into the shopping area without having to go out and around? Well, they'll be able to walk to the shopping areas, yes. Yeah. And drive down the main entry. Or, or they'd be able to drive going through the entry gate. Thank so the, the rental component of the property is, is gated. Yes. What's going to happen to the traffic? That's going to be a weird question. Like, were you guys aware that that corner could not support two movie theaters or everybody had big screen TVs in their houses? Or what? We've been canceled. Mission Bay used to have a movie theater and it closed. That corner could not can I, can I, yeah, this is Brian. So, um, my name's Brian Schmier. Um, my family built Mission Bay Plaza back in the late 80s, and I, I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with it. Um, I, I would propose to you differently um, that it can. And when General Cinemas was open, um, that particular location actually did very well. Um, and if you were here at the time, which it sounds like you were, um, you'll remember that Shadowwood actually was the afterthought. Um, that was the failing movie theater for a long, long time. Um, ironically, the numbers that they did, the, the actual volumes that they did from a, an individual store performance level was actually pretty good. Um, so both theaters survived just fine. The reason that they closed had nothing to do with 
West Boca. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the fact that General Cinemas as a corporation nationally failed. Um, the actual individual locations here failed, and that's not an atypical story, right? A Circuit City closed, and I can assure you, because we used to own University Commons and we built it, Circuit City at University Commons was a very strong performing store. The rest of the chain, not so much. So when we look at individual uses and actual operators, there's also a big difference between a Silver Spot Cinemas and a Regal Cinemas that's across the street. And there's a different experience, um, you know, how they curate their movies, their desired customer base, uh, price point. So it's a different experience, no different than you might have multiple grocers, multiple restaurants, multiple other retailers, right? There's 31 flavors because there's a lot of demand. And, and you know, we obviously made a business bet that, that we think it, it can support and that the book be successful. Does this new theater have the adjustable lounge? Hmm? Definitely. Yeah. What have you done to alleviate the traffic problem? And there's going, to, there's going to be a traffic problem. I think the impact on traffic when it opens will be, I'm not going to say immaterial because it depends on the time of the day, obviously, but I think it will be insignificant. And according to our traffic, according to, well, I'm just telling you, according to, we, traffic is, is heavily debated. What you have right now, part of the issue is, You've got people who, who, if you're going out to eat, for example, I would propose there's not a lot of options at that corner, right? Duffy's has an hour wait. Great. Can I, Go can ahead, I say, sure. because I mean, we've talked about this probably every single meeting that, um, and when we met with them and we met with the county, that people that are going to this shopping center, they're either going to pull into the shopping center or they are going to continue to go east to Boca Raton, to the uh, movie theaters in Boca, that we don't have the, this type of quality in West Boca. Believe me, people in East Boca are not going to come to West Boca to go to a theater or to go to dinner. They have no desire to go past Powerline um, and come to West Boca. So it's not that there's going to be all this extra traffic coming to go to the shopping center. These people are you and I that we already live here and we're just looking for a better experience, a better movie theater, a cleaner movie theater than Chatterwood. And when we met with these guys, that was the one thing that we insisted that we get a better movie theater in West Boca. If you go to Shadowwood, it is it's still the same carpet that was there when I took my kids to Dr. Annie, if you all had little ones that went to the uh, dentist, that she rented the whole theater every single year at Halloween and showed uh, movies. That yeah, they got great in the theaters, but if you go in the restaurants, it's the same tile, it's the same thing, it's the same carpet. This is an upscale movie theater. You can go to a, a silver spot down in um, Coconut Creek. Um, there's a silver spot down there. Go give it a try. I mean, we deserve something better than what we've got out here. So as far as the, the traffic complaints, Stan, I mean, you and I, we go over this all the time at, at our monthly meetings. Traffic is either going to pull in or they are going to continue to go straight. That's what Okay, in the, in the last two weeks. And Century Village Bus will be coming there on a regular basis. I guarantee it. Maybe. Yes, I guarantee they will. They will. The Century Village Buses, they will. And we're getting new buses, too. So. And they're getting new buses, so that, that's a plus. Wait, I have a question. In the last two weeks, there were four accidents between Lyons and 441. And that's just normal traffic of the people being there. What's going to happen when you have... Well, people need to learn how to drive, units. Stanley, and pay attention to the red lights, to the speed limit, to the car in front of them. I mean, you can't blame that on shopping centers. I mean, I but see that's all the time. Of cars, and now you It's not more the cars. It's not going to be... With slower traffic, the accidents cars. will be less severe. Right. The, the accidents are always at, at traffic signals. So more than likely at a traffic signal. We know that. The more signals we put in, the more accidents... We have I Whisper Walk. Yeah, we've we heard that story. We have any more accidents because we have snowbirds down here. Too. Exactly. And well, when the they go back up north, then we can get into <laughs> restaurants. It's a traffic lesson. Yeah, it's, it's taxes. I, it's it's all the about price of, uh, that, that we pay to live in this great community and have great amenities. Mm -hmm. For me or for, for them. So you've all yeah. witnessed what our discussions yeah. look like at our board meetings right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> can I just say that? Hey. Excuse me. Can I just say, is there a traffic light to go in off of Blades? 
Is there a, the only entrance on 95 is for the no, residents? There is a, no, there's, um, there's an existing light at 95th Avenue South, um, which is the entrance to the Federation campus with the dual stacking left, or left in. So um, westbound, on westbound Glades Road, like you can kind of see on coming this way, there's an existing signal that's there already with the dual stacking left in. And so you actually have three entrances. So there's, and then there's a, um, we're adding a median cut here. That's a non-signalized entrance. And then you obviously have the signal over in front of the Dunkin' Donuts in front of Westwood. Okay, so, so there's three entrances yeah. on the on, on eastbound, there's right in, there's one, two, right in, right turns into the project, as well as a right in down 95th to access off of this side. So there's, okay, so, so there's, there's, there's four, three. Yeah. Two with lights, two without. Yeah. And then there's also for commercial service, right, the back of house for the retail, there's another dedicated entrance, and then there's a resident only access off of 95th. So there are a half a dozen ingress and egress points, and obviously we try to design that so that, let's say, the delivery trucks are not interfering with the customers. Residents have their ability to bypass the traffic if they want, or drive right down the middle if they want. It, it's we kind of describe this as adjacent use, as a, you know, from a mixed use standpoint, because there's certain things that suburban retail still needs to survive. You hit the main one, ingress and egress, signage, visibility, parking, and a tenant mix that people actually want to go to. And that's been the biggest problem, which Sherry alluded to before. And I joke with my father that some of the centers out here are so old that he built them. And, and um, he loves that joke. Um, you know, we did Somerset, we did Mission Bay, and 30 years ago they were busy, but if you look at the reinvestment that Shadowwood and Westwinds have made, it's, there's a lot of room for improvement. So. Okay, so another question is, what about parking? So we have, um, the parking ratio here is, off the top of my head, a little over six per thousand. I don't remember the exact number. There are, um, I didn't bring the data with me, but, there is a, this parking garage here is 421 spaces uh, plus the surface lots. My recollection on the retail side is it's in excess of a thousand spaces or around there. I have to double check the exact number. Six, six per thousand is a pretty strong number in our business because when you have, it's not just about the ratio, it's about the sheer number. If, you know, in excess of a thousand parking spaces, because a certain portion of the tenants are high turnover, a certain portion of them might be, let's say a dentist is not busy past five o'clock at night. So on the movie theater side, that's a tenant that, you know, frees up a lot of parking spaces. So there's a lot of thought that goes into, we call it the merchandising mix, exactly which tenant goes in which building where, so that the restaurants feed off of each other, the ice cream shop feeds off the movie theater. The medical uses are perhaps on the side where they're, you know, the parking is not busy at the same time as the theater. Is that parking garage for the residents also? This is exclusively a retail parking garage. Okay. There is another multifamily garage on the second side. We didn't want, just want to build the first parking garage in West Boca. We wanted to build two, so um, <laughs> really extend our lead. So the, the, um, the residential piece is kind of a standalone entity. It's gated, it's restricted access, because those customers looking for that premium rental experience are also looking for privacy and security. Um, and we have to balance that with you know, the walkability, right? We want, to make, we want it to be easy for people to walk to the grocery, walk to the movie, walk to the restaurants. But you also have to offer them the other things that customers you know, demand at, you know, for this type of product. So we, we think we've done it pretty well. Um, and you know, obviously we're excited as we see the buildings coming up and we keep you know, trying to tweak and make improvements along the way. I've been trying to yes. ask, and say something sure. for a while. I'm living here almost 40 years. I'm directing it to you. You're the head of the West Boca Community Council. I'm here almost 40 years. I am very disturbed about it because I, I really need your help to explain to me how that's not going to contribute to more traffic. You have X amount of additional residences, no less the shops. And that corner has been known. I've been to meetings before where the traffic light is so long on 441 in Glades that I have asked for that, you know, to be rectified in previous meetings. But it is known historically as the most travel road in Palm Beach County. How is adding these residences and these things not, you know, and also how is it upscale by bringing Chick-fil-A and Super 
this that's bringing upscale to Gotham? I mean, that makes no sense to me. But if you can, I'd like to live here and not have Ajita. So if you can explain to me how you see this is not adding traffic to Glades Road, please help me. Okay, like, like I said before, and like I've said at all the meetings, that the traffic, people from East Boca are not coming to West Boca to go to but our shopping center. And you're family. right, there are people that are moving into the apartment complexes. And you know what? A lot of those people are some of my kids that are looking for a place. They still want to be in West Boca. A lot of residents that are selling their homes or that their parents are, are living, they're living with their parents and they want to get out of that. There is a need for residential. Obviously, if there was not a need for residential rentals, they would not be building it. East Boca, the, they're all full. Again, they are not. Anybody from East Boca not is not coming. The traffic, the traffic, whether you're going to the East Boca, uh, to East Boca, you're either going to go past this or you're going to turn into it. But there's more people. Well, in the residential, in the residential, I agree. And the, the traffic is going to be there twice a day. They're coming in and they're leaving at the same time for work and coming home. The same as, you, as they do coming out of Boca Woods or Boca West. It's the same traffic flow. At that time, the shopping center, the, they're not going to be showing um, movies at 8 o'clock in the morning. We can't have everything. Either we want a, a nice community um, with amenities that we can travel to or we don't. So it's, we can't have everything. I'd love to have everything and not have traffic out here. We know there's traffic. I travel in it every single day. It's horrendous. It is, but it's no different than it is anywhere else. From 98th Street up to 441, how are you going to relieve that problem blocking the end? Well, actually, next month we're having the um, Palm Beach County traffic at our meeting, and we can talk about that because we've talked about it with them before um, and, and with uh, FDOT. Absolutely. I mean, we're not the only can do. Actually, all the roads are congested. We got to either stop making it nice so people don't want to come here, um, and so that they want to leave. You know, years ago, actually, when when you all built uh, Mission Bay Shopping Center, 441 was a little tiny road. There was nobody out here. Mission Bay is here. There was nothing else out here. And back then, everybody screamed about that shopping center. And you're right about the theater. There were plenty of people going to the theater. Um, we either stop making things nice, everybody leaves, and everybody stops coming, or we improve and make our lives better. It would be nice to ease up on congestion, not answer. How do we do that? It's tough. Well, it's, how, how do we do that and bring amenities um, to our community without... I don't see anything that's really needed. Oh, well, we need... another chicken. Need need but you know what? Let's come out where... They're building. They're building. They're stuck in the change. As much as you don't like it, it's going to handle it. Sure. It's going to handle it. Michael, what do you want? Go ahead, Michael. Sherry? Michael. We're recognizing Michael. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. South of there, there's three assisted living facilities. There's a synagogue there. There's a Grovedale High School. And there's some other buildings there. How, have they been contacted in the uh, all business process? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and they all supported it. They absolutely, um, Mount, uh, uh, the Assisted Living, the, the Jewish Federation, absolutely. What are you doing? We have a meeting up here. Hello. We have a meeting up here. What the hell is going on here? The Federation absolutely supported this, 100%. That a lot of people um, that have their uh, mother, their father, and the assisted living, and they want to be closer. Believe it or not, there's people from Boca West um, that are looking to rent, um, sell in Boca West, and move into Why to these rentals. Why question? Except about five years ago, 441 in Glades was the most dangerous crossroads in, this, in the state of Florida. It's all Palm Beach County, plus most of Florida, Florida, the most dangerous crossroads. And this is going to make it worse with much more well, traffic. It's not the in, in a lot of ways, you guys, this is going to make it better. How? There's not going to be as much traffic in a lot of ways because the usage is you don't need a car if you're living in there. Everything's there. and They've got an Uber and Lyft full. And a lot of younger people don't have cars. They're using Uber and Lyft. So in a lot of ways, this is much, much better. And I've seen this plan work up north. It's actually better for the roads. And you're not going to see the kind of traffic you're thinking. Well, the town is important because they get a lot more taxes. It's all over. County support because you're going to get you stand in millions of dollars in taxes. So that's not an issue. The county doesn't care about it because we're not. Stephen, but 
Yeah. Friendly question? Friendly question? Can I have a friendly question? When I was in New York, I was a projectionist, so I'm very interested in the nuts and bolts of the theater. Can you tell us how many screens? Uh, is it going to be a presentation house, IMAX? What do you, what do you know about it? Um, it's 11 screens. Um, Seating capacity, do you have any idea? Off the top of my head, I don't remember. Okay. It, it changed a few times. It's a two-story theater. I think there's seven, seven on the ground floor, maybe three or four larger ones, with, and then six smaller ones uh, stacked on the first floor and the second floor. So, um, you know, he has, co um, uh, there's a silver spot in Promenade at Coconut Creek, and he, he does a, you know, a really nice operation. His intent is, you know, what he showed me and what convinced me why we went with him was he showed me, um, you know, volumes of what, how they drive their revenue. He's not looking to make money on all the superhero movies. He's curating a, a different experience. You know, he came in and, you know, we, we met a million times with the Jewish Federation, for example. And one of the things that they were very excited about and what Gonzalo, who's the owner of the Silver Spot, was to be able to host the Jewish Film Festival and, and create some synergy between the theater, especially because you know seniors are available during the day to see a movie and school kids are not. So he's really interested in trying to connect with the community and you know just along the lines of the Federation also, one of the things that they told us throughout this process just on, on the residential was there are a lot of young families that would like to be down living in West Boca, attending school at the Federation campus. They have four schools on campus and the younger families are looking for newer places to live and there is not a supply of new inventory in West Boca, either single family or especially on the, on the <coughs> rental side. The last rental project was the Charleston, Alex? Yes. In 20 years ago, uh, by the Pier 1 on Lions Road. So it's fine, but again, there's a demographic of the community that would like to be here, like to benefit from the schools and the parks and the other things, and they're, and they're underserved. So. How long would a rental leases be on the residential? Are they one year, two typically, year, or typically is it a year. month to month? Typically a year. A year. And is there any regulation of rent increases year to year, like we had in New York, rent stabilization? No, no. Just no, free market. Free market. On the workforce housing side, there will be a rent. Oh, be a, say again? On the workforce housing side, there will be a stipulation on rental increases. On the market rate side, there will not be. Thank you. Tell us about Lucky Markets. We understand that uh, their partner uh, is starting to back out from them. Are they still planning to open? Uh, the last news I heard is, and all their actions thus far have been, you know, in compliance with the lease. So um, I don't know what happens tomorrow. Of course, um, as you alluded to, um, Kroger announced they're divesting their interest. They're a minority shareholder. So, you know, they don't have control, but it's complicated. I don't know enough about the deal structure to really know, but uh, from our side, you know, we have a binding lease obligation, they have payment and performance obligations, and so far they've been honoring their commitment. So uh, my expectation, certainly my hope, and my expectation is that, they, is that they'll open. Do you have a plan B? Uh, there's always a plan B. I, I have a plan B for just about everything, so, so we'll talk. Are the recliners seats the same as the one in the Coconut Creek Silver Spot? He, he has a new chair profile. I don't know as much about his operation because... A group of us went and I heard our backs, so that's why we love yeah, Shadow Woods. He, he, um, I know with each theater that he does, and I think he's up to six or eight now, he is continually trying to refine the experience. And if it was uncomfortable for you, it may have been great for this person, so he's... He's serving a broader community, and I, I don't know enough about his in, his actual operations to, to comment on. But I'll, I'll, I'll let him know. From sure. the attendance, that when I noticed that the school bus stops for the schools, it's um, if you're going west to east, it's east of 95th Street. Do you have anything maybe coming in for the residents that they can the put, bring the school buses in? Yes, we do have a, we do have a school bus stop at the resident entrance on 95th. Oh, you did? For the, for the, yeah, for the children. Yes, okay, sir. so they'll be really left off in the ground. Yeah, correct. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Marcy. I'm a reporter. My name is Marcy Schatzman. I know. I did the uh, last Rose Markey yeah. class. How yeah. are you? How are you um, How big is the property all told? 38 acres. And do you have an opening date for Lucky's yet on the movies? We're, we're, we're projecting the, um, the retail is going to open over a duration it's you know in retail there's not really a magic unwrapping date so they're gonna we're gonna have tenants opening between uh, summer 2020 
um, probably into season 2020. So probably a five month window or so beginning in the summertime. So you don't have a time from Lucky? I don't have a specific say. date yet. Do you have anything for Come me? Come back next month and we'll give you the date. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reach out to them. Um, Silver Spot, do you have an opening Correct. for them yet? They're going to probably be a little towards the back end of that window, but okay. again, I don't have a, I don't have a specific date yet. Thank you very much. Sure. Somebody else, somebody else had a hand up. Any other questions? So I just wanted to say something about. I don't want to open this can of worms again, but I want to just say something about the traffic plan because I want to just listen. I'm not an objective observer. I'm a developer, but I'll tell you that when we went through this process, we met with Sherry and her board, and we asked everyone in this community what they needed because there are some things that this community does seem to want. Chick-fil-A was probably the most popular thing that you ever really was. Right? It yeah. truly was. Yeah. Yes. So, and there are other things like a luxury movie theater, which you were, which was very important. Right, we wanted IMAX, thank you God. Want, <laughs> yes, you, and you also wanted sit-down restaurants. Right. That was very important. So, we listened, we worked very hard at this. We did work very closely with our traffic consultants. This does comply with the five-year traffic plan of Palm Beach County. So the, the merits of the traffic have already been vetted, that they've been worked through with Palm Beach County, and we complied with that five-year traffic plan. We went through the zoning board, we went through the commission, so we feel that you know, you're not gonna see a tangible impact on traffic in this area. I understand the concern, but we drive these roads every day. Um, but I, I would just tell you that I think different than most developers, we listen to you all, we built a great product, we spend a lot of time curating the product, and we really, Brian especially, Brian's been working very hard with his team on putting the right retailers in this project that are gonna fit the community. So I hope that you all are excited as we are about the opening of it and um, certainly here to ask any, answer any questions and we've always believed in full transparency. So we're here to, you know, to help you guys feel more comfortable with what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I live in Michigan Bay and I have loads of neighbors and friends that sent me, sent me here tonight that couldn't make it. And the biggest question everybody asked is accessibility. I didn't understand what you meant about the entrances. It sounds like there's only one main entrance exit. The residents can come the other way, but everybody else can't? No. So, Explain that. So please. it's, um, I, I'm not sure if you can see this well, but. How do you get in? Okay. There's, there are, there are th well, I'm going to describe retail and residential. Okay. I don't care about residential because I'm talking about retail. But okay. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a the, sort of the main boulevard entrance. Most projects have sort of a featured entry point. Um, that'll be this main one here. There is a, you can go right in, right out, and we're adding a, a new median cut that's not in existence yet where you'll be able to make a left turn in. There's another right in, right out um, in between this entrance that we've added and the traffic signal. Follow? I don't understand. Okay, you know, when I say right in, right out, I mean if you're on Glades, you can make a right turn into the project, and if you're in the project, you can make a right turn out onto Glades Road. You can't make a left turn. You're coming from Mission Bay. Yeah. yeah. You can make a right in here, you can make a right in here, you can make a right on 95th and come in here. You have three choices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Certain or connected. But I thought you said it was only for residents. No. no, there's a there's another resident only entrance past the retail entrance. So there are there are three curb cuts on 95th. There is a retail customer, a retail commercial back of house, which is like service vehicles, and a residential entrance. So there's three entrances on 95th, and there are two main entrances on Glaze Road. I might have made it confusing. I was talking about the residential. There's only two ways to get in and out of the residential. That might have made it confusing. The retail has multiple. Right. If exiting is the same way. Basically the same way. You're going to have the same opportunity. You, you can't go, you cannot come out of the project and go west on Lake. You have to come out the 95th stoplight. It's not 95th stoplight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I'm on. Thank you. Um, a question? Yes. Um, on one of your online uh, maps mm -hmm. that talk about a, a crossover between uh, the Home Depot, you know, and yours, can you point that out? And is that just a walkthrough or is that a drive-through? No, it's, 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 a, it's a future 
cross access between us and Westlands. Pedestrian? No, it, it would be, the, oh. the, there's pedestrian along Glades Road, the regular sidewalk. Um, the idea was that there would be a future vehicular connection, but there's a lot of Red legal <laughs> details and nuances to it, so uh, it, it's not, in, it won't be in place the day we open. I don't know when it'll be in place, but one day I expect it will be. So okay. it's just, it's, it's, it's a longer conversation. Yes? Um, on, on, on the traffic, you say coming out on Glades Road, you won't be able to turn right. right. Do you have to come out to the 95th? Um, to go west on yeah. Glades Road, you'll have to come out um, 95th. Okay. My Radio. question then yeah. is on 95th, when you come to light, do you have just one single lane that's going to go left, or are you going to have a double lane? Right now, there, if I'm not mistaken, there I know are- you're adding some lanes in there now. Yeah, right now I believe there are three lanes on northbound 95th. There is, I think, a right and a double, a, a left only, a left straight left. Okay. So when you have green, and right, because the traffic coming southbound is about that much. So I believe you can go straight or left, you can go straight or left, left and, and right. So. As of right now, they're stacking. Obviously, to the extent that you know, we talk to the well, county, I mean, we want to work on time. Right. Because if you just had a single lane turning left to go west, that could get backed up. But if yeah. you if you have actually, you do have a double. Yeah. There's also you know there's when we did University Commons and we added the main entrance in front of Barnes and Noble, yeah. right? That's a non-signalized entrance, and it's time that when the light at I think it's 15th turns over by Boca High, right, that stacking clears out for turning in. It, turning out, depending on the time of day, is easy or hard. So there's a lot of people that go out and wait in the queue on 95th, and it's only backed up because of it, during the time when the high school lets out. If the high school's not letting out, it's fine. So, you know, one of the nice things with, with um, the schools that are here is their peak hours are 7 to 9 a.m. and 2 to 4 p.m. for sort of, you know, drop off and pick up, which is totally off peak for uh, retail and totally off peak for what we think of as rush hour, right? Rush hour is going to work and coming home from work and, and you know, with the apartments, right? Not everybody's coming and going exactly at rush hour, even in the communities that you live in, right? People go to work in, in a window and at PM, PM peak hour, rush hour, when I drive out here and I drive at all hours of the day, the only time, the major traffic I hit is people trying to get on the turnpike. Once I pass the turnpike heading west, it, it opens up quite a bit. So, you know, obviously there's nuances as to all the traffic patterns, time of day, time of year, and stuff like that. Season is different than off season. But, you know, again, to Alex's point, we, we've gone through this as best we can, and we think it's gonna we think it's gonna work well when it's all said and done. So, well, we see it when the season's over, and then the minute school ends. Yeah. Then it's driving down here is pretty decent. The minute school starts and then we get into the season, then it gets pretty bad. It is I, what it is. Listen, I, I, I live here too. I drive my kids to school you know, every morning. I live in Boca Bath and Tennis. And the best thing that ever happened to us was they put that temporary Verde school on military trail because now there's a cop out there, you know, clearing out the cars for people dropping off their kids. And I can get out of my neighborhood instead of every seven minutes, every two minutes, and I can actually get my kids to school on time for a change. So I hear you. It's, it's sort of the, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. So. What fire yes. district will this center be uh, covered by? Uh, uh, Not sure. Oh. It will have fire coverage, of course, but I don't. I don't know the actual district. So. Yes. Sure. Um, okay. So we have um, we have Chick Fil A. This is a national sit down. Who I can't announce yet. Um, this is another national sit down. Who will be announced in about two weeks. Um, it's a little tricky because some of the tenants have asked us not to announce yet. So we have another <laughs> fast casual restaurant uh, coming in here that's kind of a quick service. Um, we have BurgerFi. We are um, working on a lease with a uh, real high-end uh, sushi Japanese grill. Um, a local operator who's going to do a really fantastic operation. We have uh, Sloan's Ice Cream. We have a restaurant called uh, Express um, that is a breakfast and lunch uh, place co coming down from Montreal. We have a Naked Taco. Um, we have Lenora's, which is in a, um, a Naked Taco is in South Beach. They just announced one in, in Coconut Creek. 
Lenora's is um, an Italian restaurant. They're in downtown West Palm and Jupiter. Um, in line here we have uh, All of You, another local operator, Fast Casual uh, Mediterranean, uh, and Belay, which is uh, another Fast Casual concept you've probably seen. Um, so I've got three or four that I, I can't quite announce yet. Um, we, we're doing a press release, I think, on Thursday. We're going to announce a, a couple more tenants, but um, what we've tried to do is find a mix of fast casuals um, and, and sit-down restaurants, you know, based on what we think would be a good fit out here. Where's the... Tipsy's is a nail salon. Where's the uh, movie theater? <laughs> this is the movie theater back here. Okay. Is there a major grocery store in there? Uh, we have uh, Lucky's Market going in over here. Yes? When is Chick-fil-A open? Uh, they'll be one of the first ones, so I'm going to say summer right now, and I don't know if that means June, July, or August, but it's, it's, it's going to be summer. I mean, I know may not be up scale, but I'm super excited. One of the funny things in our, in our business is um, you can imagine um, we often hear more than one opinion, and um, some people, like, I like Chick-fil-A. There are people who are obsessed with it, and I get more questions about Chick Fil A than almost any other than almost any other tenant. Um, uh, I think there's been as much buzz about Chick Fil A as when we did Whole Foods 20 years ago. So it's like it's people are really excited for it. And, and listen, part of what we tried to do here is because we had the opportunity to start from scratch, was really go out and find the tenants that that people wanted. And your tenant may not be his tenant and may not be theirs, but we're trying to also help keep people in the community. And one of the issues with like sit down restaurants is, again, we, I live here. We, a lot of my friends live out here. And people who live out here say, um, I can't wait for these restaurants to open because I'm driving to Promenade. I'm driving to Delray Marketplace. I'm driving to Town Center. I'm driving to Meisner Park. Those are eight miles and five miles. So if you drive one mile and home one mile, that's two vehicle miles. If you drive to Meisner Park and back, that's eight miles each way, that's 16 vehicle miles. So from a traffic standpoint, we just turned 16 miles into two miles. And I get it, it turns into peak and off peak and stuff like that. But you know, one of the benefits um, that we're really excited about is if you choose to live here for the people that will, hopefully you're coming and going from work and after that, you don't have to get in your car again. There's a grocery, there's restaurants, there's movie theater. Is it, you know, are you ever gonna get in your car? Of course, I mean, we're not naive, but there's a lot here. And, you know, my friends that live in other markets where they have these types of mixed uses, they really do walk to the restaurant. They really do walk to the theater. So is it for everybody? Probably not. Is it, you know, will it be attractive to a lot of people? Obviously, we're betting it is, so. Hold on one second, sir, yes. Where's the trick again? Because the traffic for the trick on Hill it's just, the parking lot, it is, so many cars so it is tucked nicely up here in our corner with a massive amount of stacking for the cars and parking all the way surrounding it. So all that congestion will hopefully be self-contained. It's a parking lot when you drive by. All the cars online just to go through. Yeah, the difference is that was added after the shopping center was already right. there. This, so this is being from, from the ground up. If, so. if, we stand, if our traffic for Chick-fil-A extends off our site, I will be crying at night that we didn't get percentage rent. Okay, <laughs> um, it, it's, it's contained up, they wanted to be up on the hard corner, that was really important to them. Obviously yeah. the access points are here and here, so there is a tremendous amount of parking area around them. We know the type of traffic they generate, so the circulation and the traffic engineers designed it within the site to make sure that this all works, and you can bypass it if you choose not to wait in line. Chick-fil-A happens to be a big asset because they closed on Sunday, so that alleviates the traffic on that day. Yeah, but be careful on the grand opening because that's going to be a busy day. Everybody wants that beer in, free. In the southeast chance. corner, there's a body of water. Yeah, what's that? What is that? Retention. Yeah, what, what does that mean to us? What does that do? Uh, to you, probably, it probably doesn't impact you. It what. What the, what the building code requires is you have to take all the water that, you, that lands on your site and store it uh, for a certain amount of time before you tie into the drainage system that's managed by the Lake Worth Drainage District. It's a whole separate set of permits through South Florida Water Management, the Lake Worth Drainage District. They have very specific rules, they don't bend them for anyone, and we complied. What we tried to do as we design it is to turn that body of water into something that might be visually attractive to the residents, 
Um, and also, you know, it's over on the side where we have residents on the other side of 95th. It creates a little bit of buffer um, from, you know, the, the congestion and stuff around the Federation entrance. So. so there is a canal on the south side of your property, and this would be connected to it. Yes. Is that correct? It yes. ultimately is connected oh. through a weir um, that is all managed by the Lake Worth Drainage District. Sure. So. And one of the concerns is that with all this extra concrete, there's less chance for uh, flood water to be absorbed uh, into the ground. Uh, have you done any studies or can you give us any uh, information about can we expect more local flooding because... No, no. It's, uh, the dirt the, is no longer there to soak up yeah, all that the, rain? The build we comply with the Palm Beach County Building Code, and to the extent that you replace pervious area with impervious area, you have to capture that through a you know a, a stormwater drainage system and have a place to you know store it on site. So that lake represents you know obviously there was no lake before, so that lake is designed to hold a certain amount of water based on the the uh, engineer's analysis of how much water we have to store based on what South Florida Water Management, Lake Worth Drainage District, and Palm Beach County tell us. We designed it exactly according to their how standards. How deep is that, that pond, roughly? 10, 20? I think, it, no, I don't no. think it's, it's not very deep, no. 10, 15 feet. 10, 15 feet. 15 yeah, feet. I mean, it, it pitches, so I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, though. I saw it before there was water in it, but that was a while ago. Also, I don't know if he knows it, yes. the pipes between the drains, they have holes in them, so the water, the drain water, yeah. actually percolates into yeah, the ground. There, so it's when just we, when you have heavy rains. Yeah, when you have a catch basin catch. in your site, right, the parking lot drives the water to the catch basin. All those catch basins that connect to each other and to the um, to the water retention, um, it's called exfiltration pipes. So they're designed to percolate water as the water moves through. And where is the swimming pool? And is there something special about the entrance to the swimming pool? I think we forgot the swimming pool. Just kidding. Pardon? Uh, I said I think we forgot the swimming pool, but I was just kidding. Oh, um, in the main retail, in the main residential building, right. um, that's where the clubhouse is and most of the residential amenities. So, in the courtyard of that building will be a resort-style pool with you know kind of a you know really nice luxuri luxurious resort-style seating areas and cabanas and you know outdoor amenities around the pool. Is there something like what do they call gravity pool or, or infinity? Pool. infinity. No, not infinity. I think it was on your website that you have like a slope <coughs> that you can walk down instead of using a, a ladder. It's a, it's it's a kind of the, uh, zero edge, zero edge pool basically. So the water is the same level as the pool deck. So you're not going to see a coping. That's all. So it's kind of like what yeah. resorts are doing today. But so there's no sloping walkway. No, no, no it's just uh, like steps no. you go would go steps down. Steps you go down into the. Uh, How deep would the swimming pool be? You know. Uh, I mean, anywhere from six to you know four to six feet, depending on where you're at. So not a diving pool, in other words. No. Not like Mission Bay in the old days of diving. No. <laughs> Any other questions? And will it be heated the pool. Uh, will not be heated. No. Right. By the no. sun. <laughs> by the sun, the natural way. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have heated pools in Century Village, everybody. Yeah, if anything else comes up, let us know. Thank we'll you. Send them. <laughs> yeah, we'll send them to Century Village if they need. All right. Thank you. Um, and I trust that that you guys will send me a PDF of this that we can put on our website. I know it's on your website. You guys can um, have those if you like. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep one. Um, and. We'll email it out if anybody wants it. If you didn't get a picture of it, or if you want a PDF to send out to your community, um, we're happy to send that out to you. Does anybody have any other questions? Post yeah. Office. The post office. Who's had an opportunity to visit our lovely post office? Boca Rio. Yes. Yes. Who agrees that it is absolutely beautiful? So nicely maintained. Exactly. So, um, I and, think it is. I have a feel how government is disgusting. It is. It's, it's, it's absolutely disgusting. Um, but I will tell you that if you contact, if you contact our, our Congressman um, Frankel, believe me, they will get it cleaned up. Probably once a year I call, I send, I, I, in my phone I've got dozens of pictures of that post office, how filthy it is. Um, the, there's ducks, there's the cats, and I mean, I'm not opposed to animals, but they don't clean up after them. So they don't cut the grass there, they don't pressure clean, it is filthy, not only on the outside, but on the inside it's filthy, um, and I think it's dangerous. So call Congressman um, Frankel's office and, and complain to her. 
they need to, to step up. And that, it's not the only post office. The one down off um, Atlantic and 441 is, is just as disgusting um, as the one in Oakwood. Thank you for bringing that up. By Dorsus? Yes. Yeah. It's a satellite. It's been there for quite a while. Yeah, that's yes, right. I only just noticed yeah. it. He's been there for a while. He used to be across yeah. the street from the Country Village. Right. There's one in Shadowy, too. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Five years. I, I live in Comfort Green, did you know? Right. Um, a lot of our the guy residents. Oh, yeah. 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 A few of our residents have heard, and they don't know, it's in reference to a municipal golf course that is going to be rezoned for. Um, possibly a, uh, what do you call those, a driving range and a hotel. Is that the one across from us? I, is that I, a different, different, uh, I, I, I think that's probably the one uh, up in Bogotica. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that one. I do. Um, I know okay. there's some litigation going on. That yeah, know the, with the that, city of Boca. that golf course belonged to the city of Boca. Yeah. Right. Okay, they bought another golf course off of Second Avenue. From what I'm understanding, they're negotiating with a large home builder and they're having to do a lot with with the, their property that backs up the existing homes there I mean a real big buffer zone but that that's a lot of property and those are going to be single family homes okay well that, that was rezoned that was rezoned right so they probably a year and a half two years ago you're talking about they weren't sure if it was that one and it was going to be rezoned so it was a combination right. of the hotel or whatever or I'm not saying anything about that being rezoned, but we know that that contract is. But I don't think there's like the driving range. <laughs> the driving range, I'm going to guess it's supposed to be more cars again coming on Blaine's road back to that community, too. More customers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could write, I mean, there it is. It's possibly um, it's an issue. issue. Well, we've met with jail homes I prior to them and asked for to get the turnpike energy. But you'll have more customers for this new beautiful mm -hmm. shopping center. You're going to get a lot of traffic if you realize you go north of Lyons, past Blades, past the shopping center, the Pier 1. There's farmland back in there. And the farmland on the west side of the road goes all the way to 441. Right. One of these days, one of the big builders just buy that up and put homes in there. That was actually, I believe, rezoned probably 15, 20 years ago. Um, for a single family residence, yeah. 2,500 if I recall correctly. But you're right, at some point, Farmer John's family, they're gonna stop arguing with each other, and they are, they're gonna sell it off, and they've already got the development the rights. The, the, the east side of um, that property across from Olympic Heights. Yeah. The east side backs up to this. Right, the but that, there's a lot of wetlands there, so that's not so desirable, so we're hopeful that that land stays yeah. like it is, and someone will buy it just to get the development rights off of it and leave it vacant. Anything else? Next month, you can come and complain about traffic because we will have somebody here from Palm Beach County and all the issues that we talked about last year where half of them have been ignored by the county. So Commissioner Berger and Palm Beach County traffic will be here. We'll see you then. Nice job. Thank, Thank you. Good job. What Thank about you. this?